Good morning, folks. We've got some top science news for you today. We've had more solar flares and there was another big CME, including the first proton event in quite a while. We'll take a look at the new sunspots as well. No shortage of space weather in the coming days is expected. And we are starting, as always, with our star. We will see several coronal motions as filaments collapse. Most of the flashing of the flares will be hard to see in this view due to their impulsive nature and low M-class power range should be able to see one at the end of the departing limb on the right south of the equator. Still, no significant coronal holes to watch at this time, but in terms of the flaring, they will be easier to spot in 131 angstroms, mostly confined events, impulsive as I mentioned, with again, the largest one coming at the end of the sequence, just south of the equator on the right, at the departing limb, the largest of the day, an M3.9 event, basically M4. Its flash is much more easily recognizable. When we pull up the GOES X-ray flux chart, you can see the smaller nature of the flares over the last day, several M-class events, but no major ones, with the larger spike at the right being the M3.9 event. One eruption of note happened behind the limb. You can see it there off the south from one of the departed active regions, and on SOHO, the CME it produced was sizable and contained about a planet's worth of material. Once again, this blast is not aimed at Earth. But it did hit Earth's magnetic connection to the Sun, which prefers the right side as we view it, surging high-energy protons to Earth. This energetic particle event didn't reach storm levels, but it's a good reminder that the Sun can impact our planet even when it's not firing in our direction. Quick look at the sunspots here. You will still see we have several active regions to keep an eye on. And over the incoming limb, those northern and southern groups we identified via their arching magnetic fields yesterday have now appeared on the Earth-facing half of the Sun, which is why there will be no shortage of space weather for even a few more days to come. A couple notes as we look first at graphics from the Weather Channel. First, this train of storms that's been hitting California out of the Pacific is not unlike the train of sunspots and flares we've been getting. Many of the flares have impacted the Pacific in terms of atmospheric ionization, and this is one of the expected impacts. Another one is unexpected tornado outbreaks. Bad one hit the USA yesterday with several twisters dropping in the afternoon, created a significant amount of damage, and several have been reported killed. Quick climate update here. There's a huge discrepancy between what the mainstream is saying there was an average of one degree Celsius warmth above average for the 2022 year with what we're actually seeing from satellites. By the way, the government's data website is still not working, but the satellite measurements from UAH show only 17% of that, a 0 0.174 degrees Celsius warmth above average, which is basically nothing. That's Dr. Roy Spencer's site there. Last but not least, they continue to discover nova events that surprised them. This one had very unusual chemical signatures, and for about the 20th time in the last three years, they find their decades of seemingly solid nova science expanding once again. What was thought to be impossible is indeed possible. Just wait until this happens for them with the sun. We greatly appreciate your support. Watch our playlists or grab our books at the links below the video. Catch up and get acquainted with all these topics and what they mean for our future. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.